great. Hi, Lily. Lily Xi Jing Yang is a member of an Asian American artist collective, Lily Hong Lei, and a practitioner of both virtual reality and, and augmented reality. But as we will hear from her at the same time, she's striving to emphasize the issues um, of uh, under the, underserved communities and marginalized uh, uh, groups. Okay, now I'm going to disappear and leave you the screen. Okay. All yours. Okay. Uh... Hello, everyone. I'm Lily. Thank you for having me. Uh, today, I'd like to talk a little bit about the art practice of my and my team, Lily Hongle Art Studio. Uh, we are Asian American and immigrant artists collaborative whose uh, uh, practice involves both the traditional art medium and uh, uh, emerging technology, such as uh, uh, extended reality. Uh, extended reality is an umbrella term covering uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, and other immersive technologies. Uh, in our work, we are AR, traditional art medium, and uh, physical spaces are often intermingled and inseparable. Um, let's just start from uh, uh, the projects integ integrating traditional art form with a, a target-based augmented reality. Um, the first work I'd like to share with you is uh, uh, Shadow Play, Tales of Urbanization in China. Uh, this project uh, combines a painting uh, shadow puppetry motif uh, augmented reality and the virtual reality to illustrate the uh, social transformation brought about by the uh, turbulent, turbulent urbanization process in China over the past 30 years. Uh, let's uh, take a look. Lily, is it okay? There is no sound. Uh, there's no sound this part. Okay. I was very much inspired by uh, the folk art from uh, uh, East Asia. This project very uh, much inspired by the traditional shadow puppetry. This shows the underground um, residence. Okay, this is just a, a few clips from uh, uh, the Shadow Puppy, uh, Shadow Play projects. Um, the next, the next work I'd like to share with you is uh, the Sunken Garden, and this uh, uh, art project highlights the uh, endangered species in New York State. Uh, similarly, it also integrates uh, oil painting with uh, augmented reality on mobile phone and uh, animations. Um, let's take a quick look.
Okay, this is uh, the Sunken Garden. So the next uh, uh, project I'd like to share with you is uh, still a work in progress, um, the Red String at Flushing Chinatown. Uh, this project also uh, utilized a target-based augmented reality in public space. Uh, this project is a public art project designed for uh, a park in the Asian American neighborhood in Queens, New York. As you can see from the uh, project visualization image, uh, we are producing large scale banners to be uh, installed along the fences in the park, uh, where many Asian immigrants congregate on a daily basis. And the banner designs are inspired by Asian knot or called Asian red string, which is a type of uh, uh, popular Asian folk art uh, with over a thousand years of history. And the shapes and the patterns of the uh, Asian knot usually uh, symbolize unity, uh, love, peace, and uh, prosperity. Using a uh, target-based augmented reality app, viewers can scan the images uh, in the center of the banner and watch them come to life in short animations, uh, which are intended to reflect on uh, Asian American identity and the cultural heritage. And through this uh, project, we try to bring healing to the Asian immigrant community in Flushing Chinatown, uh, which has been devastated by the pandemic, both economically and uh, emotionally. And here are more banner design images I uh, would like to share with you. Okay, uh, I'd like to uh, give a little bit explanation about the target-based AR, or we call it the marker-based AR, uh, demonstrated by the last uh, three projects. Uh, this type of AR links a specific physical image in the, uh, in the real world environment with a virtual object. And through an AR app, uh, the virtual object is a 3D model animated image or a video can be superimposed onto the target image. So viewers they need to use their mobile phone camera to scan the target for image recognition in order to uh, perceive the augmented reality. The marker based or the target based image recognition system requires uh, several modules uh, such as uh, uh, camera, uh, image capture, image processing, and uh, uh, marker tracking, among uh, other things. So this type of augmented reality has uh, been used by uh, social media, including Instagram and Snapchat through filters and games. Uh, the, next, uh, the next project I like to show you involves a different type of augmented reality, which is a, a location-based AR. Um, the Butterfly Lovers AR at Times Square uh, is a, a site-specific AR project that has been installed at the heart of uh, New York City. Uh, the, design of these uh, two characters uh, uh, dressed in traditional Asian outfits are inspired by an ancient Chinese folktale and uh, uh, traditional opera. So through an AR app on the mobile phone, viewers can see the butterfly lovers image being superimposed on Times Square landscape. In this work, we intend to uh, visualize the uh, Asian American cultural identity by 
creating the contrast between the augmented reality and the uh, physical environment. So the next project I'd like to show you is uh, uh, Tankman and uh, Goddess of a Democracy. Uh, which is a collaboration of uh, uh, Professor John Craig, Craig Freeman at Emerson College and our art studio. So I first threw an augmented reality mobile app. This is a 3D sculpture of Tankman and uh, Goddess of Democracy were launched at Tiananmen Square in Beijing, uh, where the real incident took place during the uh, student protest in 1989. Um, on this image, you can see on the left side, it's a photo of the actual uh, statue of a goddess of a democracy, which was uh, created by Chinese students um, during the, the protest in 1989. And in the middle and uh, the right side, are uh, the images of the digital sculpture, uh, digital sculpture recreated by Professor John Craig Freeman. And this uh, two virtual sculpture has have been installed around the world, uh, including this one. Um, it's actually in San Francisco uh, in front of an uh, art gallery. And this uh, view of the inside the gallery space, uh, the Goddess of a Democracy AR. So uh, let me give a little bit explanation about the location-based augmented reality. Uh, location-based augmented reality aims at the fusion of the 3D object with a physical space where the, the user is located. And this technology uses the location and uh, sensor of a smart device to position, position the virtual object at the desired location. And this type of AR technology reads the data in real time using the camera, GPS, and uh, uh, compass. A very popular example of the location-based AR, of course, is uh, uh, the smartphone game, uh, Pokemon Go. So besides the version of uh, location-based AR, I uh, also want to share the two virtual sculpture, Tankman and Goddess of a Democracy as an immersive VR experience. Uh, let me play a video clip of the metaverse environment with this uh, two virtual sculpture. It's called Land of Illusions. <laughs> Oh, no. 
Okay. Uh, the virtual uh, virtual reality environment you just watched um, is created by our art studio and it's currently open to the public on sensor, which is a, a metaverse. In other words, a virtual world running on the um, Windows system. Everybody can visit the space on the internet. And I'd like to uh, add a note about why we make the VR version of the uh, virtual sculptures. Uh, some viewers here might remember uh, the news about uh, that on the last Christmas day, several universities in Hong Kong dismantled and removed artworks from uh, their campuses, uh, including uh, Goddess of Democracy, commemorating the Tiananmen massacre in 1989 uh, in an attempt to further erase that part of history. Responding to their action, we launched a presentation of both uh, virtual sculptures uh, in the metaverse. Uh, through the internet and the VR headset, people can have permanent access to the Ten Commandments and the Goddess of a Democracy. Uh, this uh, standing digital uh, sculpture is created by uh, Professor John Craig Freeman. In Freeman's words, the, the, on, uh, the online virtual world or metaverse can be considered a public space where artists can intervene. Um, uh, last but not least, uh, I'd like to emphasize that the extended reality is also a great place for artists' collaborations. Uh, last year, we had the honor to work with some wonderful media artists, such as uh, uh, Joanne Green, Lely Pascal, uh, John Craig Freeman, and the curator He Lee at Duke University to launch a, a group exhibition themed around art and nature. Uh, I would like to play a video documentation of uh, this uh, immersive installation uh, in the metaverse as a uh, conclusion of my uh, presentation. It's called Art Community Garden. Okay, yeah, that's my presentation. Um. Very good, and uh, just for those <coughs> who are not familiar with Sansar, so Land of Illusion is available, you said, on Sansar, S-A-N-S-A-R, yes. and I assume you need a headset. Mm. When you have to install Sansar, and you, have, you need a headset, right? Uh, not really. You can experience that uh, metaverse either on a PC computer or through the VR headset. Oh. Uh, on, on the desktop, it's totally good. Uh, that's called Sun. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. 
Um, so how much, how much does, so first of all, what is, uh, I keep asking this to anybody who works on new technologies, what's, uh, what's the reaction from the audience? How does the audience, because see, to enjoy these things, you need to be a little uh, tech savvy, right? Or at least tech friendly. Uh, it's much easier to just uh, look at a painting and decide I like it or not. So mm. what's the action of the audience when you do this uh, more complicated way of, uh, of um, artworks? Uh, actually, it's not necessarily to be uh, complex. I, I don't define myself. I don't consider myself a, a techy uh, person. I'm, I have I have a background in fine arts, in painting, basically. I, I just uh, um, pick up the the technology in the most intuitive way. Uh, <laughs> Uh, basically, we right now can scan the uh, the QR code with our phone and directly download the, the AR uh, augmented reality on our phone. And for the uh, virtual reality, it's also a very user friendly um, interface. A lot of people are actually surprised by uh, how how easy to use those. Uh, 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 program are it's a uh, it doesn't require any uh, technology um, uh, specialty. It, it's uh, as long as you have the a will to to try, you have the interest to try. It's a very much just like a PC video game. Um, kids can pick it up immediately. I actually I I, I think. A, because kids don't have a lot of uh, psychological boundary <laughs> for, in, in their mind, so they can immediately jump into the virtual world. Um, adults, they, I don't know, uh, people probably just feel a little bit scared before they, they start trying. <laughs> it's, a, it's not hard at all. Um, somebody's asking if people in China are able to access your art through a VPN, and the second part of the question, I think, uh, would they get in trouble if the government knew they were viewing your art? Mm. I I think they are able to access, have access to those work. Uh, I hope they don't get into trouble because, because so far those apps are still accessible. So that means uh, um, Probably the government haven't hasn't paid much attention to them yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, that's a still a space that people may uh, have access to 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 those sculptures. How how do you spread the word about an augmented reality installation? I mean, I don't see it as I walk in the street. How are you going to tell me that there's something interesting there? Hmm. Uh, Usually, if uh, if uh, this uh, a image, a banner, uh, or a, a print contains the uh, AR uh, component, uh, there there usually come with uh, uh, either a QR code tell tells the user scan me to view the AR, or they have some uh, um, instruction uh, on the on the artwork. To, to... See, when, when I go into an art gallery, of course, I know there's going to be art. If I'm mm. just walking in a street, it's it's mm. not intuitive that there's art there, uh -huh. correct? Uh, it depends. <laughs> right now, more and more people are interested in viewing the, the interactive artworks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if there's another question. I see that somebody raised their hand, but I don't see any QA, any anything in the oh. queue. Uh, does it work on Mac? Uh, unfortunately, it, so far the, the uh, sensor, the metaverse usually work on Windows uh, system. Um, it's um, very much like a, a PC video game. The technology just uh, basically is the uh, uh, same as a PC video game. Uh, Mac. If you have a Windows system on Mac, is that gonna work? Um, okay, she's asking if you have a big team. 
we have a small team, but we have a lot of uh, collaborations with uh, um, different artists. Yeah, I enjoy the, the collaboration in the metaverse. That's a, um, that's, that's a great experience. Uh, you have the uh, real-time interaction and the real-time communication and you build things together. It's very much uh, like building a world uh, with other artists together. It's, um, it's a, such an immersive uh, experience. I, okay, I, great. I, I, think, I think this is actually a very good uh, way for those who are not familiar with these new technologies. So just go mm -hmm. to Sansar, download Sansar, install it yes. on Windows. And, and just... Uh, yeah, it's called the Land of the Illusion and another project called the Art uh, Community Garden. Yeah, that's a two different experiences. It is a... a Art circuit. Community Garden. Yeah, you can, just, you can uh, feel free to, to explore these two spaces. It's open to everybody. 